the street. In about 10 minutes, when the start takes place here to Burga. But first, I may give the word to the eldermen of sport of our city here at Bergen. Goedenavond. Gerardsbergen, goedenavond beste sportliefhebbers. Welkom op de markt van Gerardsbergen voor de start van de achtste editie. Voor de vierde maal in Gerardsbergen van de Transcontinental Race. The city of Gerardsbergen is proud and honored to welcome you all here in the marketplace of Gerardsbergen. In a few moments you will meet the couple stones of our muur. Good luck, I should say. Perfect. <laughs> yeah. One minute. It's especially designed for having it. Uh, yeah, sure. Of course. Now it's got now. Now you have to go. That's mad. <laughs> it is. <laughs> you, had, you had to gimbal. <laughs> Don't go too hard, otherwise you're going to open your mouth yeah. and breathe. <laughs> Three, two. into the race I'm going through Brussels and the tram the tram tracks are a bit of a nightmare Starting the race last night at 10 p.m. I've gone through Belgium, gone through a bit of the Netherlands, and I'm now in Germany. I've had to adjust my cleat on the fly a little bit, uh, just change the position of it. I've stupidly got new cleats and new pedals that I've not really ridden enough before the event. It's a bit silly of me, but I've got to stick with it now. Might have to do the Lachlan Morton trick and buy a pair of sandals. Uh, I've also put the saddle down a little bit and hopefully that helps. And I'm not sure whether to put
put some ibuprofen gel on my knee, whether that's just gonna numb the pain and make it worse because I won't feel the pain, or I should just feel the pain a bit and work out if I can make it better. Saddle height adjustments seem to be easing my knee off a little bit, just taking it steady. Uh, let's keep on plugging away. I'm about 350k in, uh, just not even 10% of the total distance. I'm finding this really tough. Um, my knee's still pretty sore. Um, yeah, it rained a little bit for the last hour, which is kind of nice. Not sure what I'm going to do about sleeping tonight, but yeah, just got to figure that one out. I don't know what I was thinking when I planned this on Kamut. So steep. Very unnecessary. Last night, I uh, pulled a bit of an all-nighter. My knee was feeling better. Um, so I decided just to push on, see if I could catch him with the time I lost from uh, going slowly with the knee. Um, then I had a couple of really short naps this morning, one, one for five minutes and one for 15 minutes. So I've not had much sleep, but um, I'm gonna get a hotel tonight. So it should be all right. It's amazing the different highs and lows you go through on a race such as this. Like I start off pretty well going up the Mur, and then had a bit of a down moment when with my knee. And then last night felt really good, pushed on a lot. And then today with the heat, just not been able to find any decent food. I've, been, I've really struggled. And then I've just been in McDonald's for half an hour not knowing what's, what's going on. I'm closing in on checkpoint one, uh, which means I'm gonna be leaving Germany and entering the Czech Republic. Around each checkpoint there's a bit of parkour that you've got to do like on the route and 
This one coming up is the longest. Graded concrete slabs is not a nice surface to be riding on when you're already absolutely broken from all the riding you've done. I'm aching all over and this is not helping. So I messed up a little, well, quite a bit. Uh, my commute chopped off the end of the parkours. So I didn't realize that I had to go all the way down the hill because I was already part way up it. And I'd done most of the way to the checkpoint one. So I've just had to descend all the way back to basically the bottom of the mountain, which is very annoying but it was like the nicest descent I've ever done. But at least move tarmac and just like sweeping twisty bends. It was, it was beautiful. Um, so always look on the bright side of life. like deja vu riding this gravel section again but it's a perfect gravel track for the giant revolt and the Hutchinson 32 mil uh, tires tubeless great combination for this sort of thing trying to find this checkpoint um, I'm currently cycling through a forest and seeing loads of weird stuff I'm definitely hallucinating things um, yeah I think when I get to the checkpoint I need to get some sleep 20 minutes in the time I've been riding is not enough so yeah that's the plan I'm currently in 
Desin, I think that's how you pronounce it, uh, in the Czech Republic. And it's very Soviet-esque, but it'll be really beautiful. Um, it's really taken my mind off, off the pain in, in my body at the minute. Just lots of interesting things to look at. And uh, yeah, I just need to find some water now. I've had one bottle since I started at 3 a.m. and it's now getting close to six. So it'd be probably good to, before the temperature increases, to down some water. We've decided against drinking the graveyard well water. It was a little bit bitty and there was a bit of a fall from where the, the gravestones were to where the well was, so not worth the risk. Finally feels like uh, I'm out of the lumpy section of the Czech Republic and now get some faster flat terrain but yeah that was a bit was brutal my knees really hurt and it was just really tough going and really slow and then the rain didn't help it made it a lot worse I got pretty cold with the rain but the, the sun's back out now and it's about 100 kilometers to the border of Germany, so try and get there tonight. Riding into Munich now, and it's rather warm. Uh, just trying to get a bit of a respite in the in the shade in the bike path. I've now left Munich, and I'm on my way to the Italian Alps. Uh, going over the Paso de Gavia, which is the next checkpoint. So yeah, that'll be fun. You can, I can now see the, the Alps off in the distance. We're going through Austria and then into Italy. The clouds above the mountains are pretty ominous. And I've just checked the weather forecast 
and uh, a bit of a storm coming in tonight. So I think get a hotel, rest up, have a shower, and then the weather looks clear for the morning. So I just have to get all the, the hard stuff done. In the morning, in the afternoon, there's another, another storm coming in. glad that I stayed in the hotel last night. It was pretty uh, ropey with the weather, with a storm rolling in. Um, I feel a bit more rested, but I now realise how broken I am after getting rid of some of the surface grime. It really shows that this is just a brutal ride and it's just taking a lot out of the body. I'm now briefly in Switzerland before heading back into Italy and it's such a nice temperature to be riding at the minute, it's about 23 degrees and uh, nice to be in the mountains, it takes your mind off the pain in your legs and the saddle sores. riding up the umbrail and so there's some stunning switchbacks. It'd be lovely to come back here and do it on a bit of a lighter setup. But yeah, can't complain about the scenery. <laughs> about to eat my last Luchos banana leaf wrapped energy product. I put a load in my pocket when I set off from Belgium. I uh, probably had about 20. So yeah, last one. It's gonna get eaten now. Just for a morale boost going up the Umbri.
14? Oh, three. Like three. Down in the so yeah. Nice. Almost at the top of Paso de Gavia and scenery is pretty amazing up here and once I get over the top of this it's the two biggest climbs out the way which will feel good and then almost halfway I think that's probably another 200 kilometers that's the halfway point the last of the climbing pretty much and now it's downhill and then flat to Croatia where the bergs start again but I've got up this climb as fast as possible try and time it before the rain the rain's just started at the top so it'll be a bit of a ginger descent on the way down Holy shit, you trip. <laughs> Where have you got to get to today? Trento. <laughs> How far is that? 85. In this rain. And it rains. But it's only downhill. Yeah. I got absolutely drenched on the last climb of the day yesterday. Well, last descent. Um, so I stopped at a, at a hotel last night and it was raining all night so got some extra rest about seven hours of sleep which is the most I've had so far on this trip um, so yeah feeling a bit refreshed after all the climbing yesterday and going through a, a valley at the minute and should be pretty flat till I get out of Italy now so yeah need to push on and have a big day today so yeah almost halfway Get to a supermarket in time yesterday before everything closed because it closes early in Italy and then I don't really have much food I've run out of everything. Always have some backups, but I've eaten all my backups. Um, and nothing seems to be opening until 7.30 this morning, so I've got another hour to wait of hungry cycling. bike path is but as you can see there's a bit of a, a landslide so I think I'll have to turn around and see if I can get onto the main road and get around that way but yeah frustrating <laughs>
completely out of the mountains and I've just descended and it looked totally flat. Uh, I was going to video but then just took such a fast descent I didn't want to stop. Um, now I've got a bit of flat before Slovenia. Uh, but yeah, very hot down here. But I stay hydrated. Last night coming into the last bit of Italy, I was hoping to push on over 400 kilometers. Um, but then I started to get a bit of knee pain and my left knee was feeling pretty fragile. So I stopped um, at a pizzeria, had a, had a big old pizza um, and then charged my DI2. So that's fully charged again now, so no worries with that. And then started riding again and with a bit of ibuprofen gel it seemed to have resolved itself and I was able to cycle slowly into Slovenia. Um, so yeah, got through the rest of Slovenia which wasn't very far um, in the early hours of the, the morning and then descended down into Croatia to where I am now but I think the whole day I'll be spending in Croatia today and it's going to be hot, above 30 degrees. Um, it's already warm and it's like 7 or 8 o'clock in the morning. So yeah, we'll see how it goes. <laughs> I was just heading down uh, a 50 kilometer an hour descent uh, for about 20 minutes and then for some reason my commute route took me down this schnabby single track trail um, which is not the best route choice 
because I think the uh, the road that I was on just joins up further onto this one. Um, yeah, so I hope I don't get a puncture. I'm now back on the same road that I left to go on the Shinabi Trail. Uh, a bit annoyed with myself that I didn't spot that, but um, is what it is. It's gonna be a lovely sunset. I was cracking hard, um, definitely needed some food and happened on this watermelon stall, um, which is very handy, out of the blue. Um, I'm now sitting down eating a watermelon with my dinner. I'm now looking after the stall, so if anyone wants to buy a watermelon, I'm your man. Well, I tried to ride through the night again last night. Uh, even bought a Red Bull to power me through and uh, I, I just couldn't stay awake on the bike. Uh, very tired. Um, so I stopped at a bus stop, set my alarm for two hours, did that and then cycled for another five minutes and was like still knackered to stop for a further um, hour or so and uh, feeling a bit more fresh now but we quite like to get some uh, some food. No shops open yet. left Croatia and I'm now out of the EU I believe and I'm in Bosnia and Herzegovina I think that's how, how you pronounce it um, but yeah new country never been to this country before so um, be interesting to to have a look first 10 minutes of getting into Bosnia I'd pretty much made up my mind that I wasn't going to enjoy it due to a, a number of close passes by cars uh, coming scarily close and well trucks are even worse um, they basically they, they, they hoot their horn and then to warn you that they're coming and then come inches past you but then I've been absolutely stunned by the the scenery which is incredible and then the architecture in the, in the towns is beautiful and there are some cliff jumpers jumping off some of the bridges um, if I wasn't in a race I would have loved to have stayed there more um, yeah maybe I've gone for a swim I'm really craving a swim right now so hot and climbing and just very sweaty
kilometers left to go before I reach the third checkpoint. I'm just totally cracked. I think the heat and the, the climbing today has taken out of me. Um, and then through this valley, it's just been a headwind, which you're expecting this to be the easy bit and then just smashes you in the face with a, with a headwind. But yeah, it's, um, I'm gonna be glad when I do reach the checkpoint. I'm currently on my way up a mountain to cross from Bosnia into Montenegro. And I think it's the most spectacular and beautiful border crossing I've ever done. It's amazing. I believe I'm now in Montenegro. There's been no sign to tell me so, but um, looks like I am on the map. walking on gravel in my new lovely road shoes. Um, it's 
So my route just hit a complete dead end. Um, so my gravel track shortcut, there wasn't a shortcut, um, it was totally pointless. Um, so the dam that I was going to cross there just barred and there's um, guard dogs. Just left Montenegro and I'm now in Serbia. Uh, just gotta cross this country and then get into Romania and then just the home stretch to Bulgaria then and the Black Sea. I was about to turn around and take, um, reassess my route and take maybe a longer route round because of the gravel track up here. Um, and amazingly it's turned into really smooth tarmac. Um, so I'm glad I didn't uh, change my decision and try and reroute, but sometimes it works out, sometimes it doesn't. Um, so yeah, hopefully this tarmac lasts Uh, that tarmac didn't last, just had the hardest gravel climb um, and I've just hit a bit of a plateau and still got a fair way to go I think. Hopefully it's not a gravel descent. Um, yeah, I'm regretting this this route but I don't know, it's, it's difficult to, to know what it's going to be like until you're here. I thought it was going to be a bit easier after that third checkpoint but this is brutal, I'm dripping with sweat, and um, yeah, it's tough. Finally made it back to some tarmac. Um, I'm not sure how long that took me, but a rather long time. Um, spent a lot of energy getting up that climb, and I probably lost a lot, a few places from people overtaking me going a much more, um, not more direct, but a smoother road and a lot faster. Um, but there's no way of checking because my SIM card won't work in in Serbia. So I'll have to just hope and find out when we get to um, the checkpoint, I guess. Um, yeah, I'm going to keep on going and maybe change my route a little bit. now cycling along the Danube um, still in Serbia you can see over into Romania on the other side uh, the last time I was cycling on the Danube so on my way back from China uh, and Shanghai in 2019 um, yeah it's a lot hotter now different time of year
What I was going to say to the camera was that Serbia has been my least favourite country on this race so far. Um, just with the extreme heat at the minute and there's loads of trash everywhere <laughs> and you also get some horrible drivers that come um, very close to you. Uh, similar to, um, to Bosnia as well. <laughs> but you also get um, with the trucks and cars taking risks on the roads and there being lots of stray dogs and dogs on the roadside which chase you and um, isn't very pleasant especially when you're riding at night to be um, pretty daunting but then the upside of that is it keeps you awake so you're more awake in Serbia I found than say Germany where it's a bit more easy to uh, start falling asleep on the bike um, but yeah seen quite a few dead dogs um, squished on the side of the road and it's not a pleasant sight to see um, so yeah I was gonna say that Serbia has been a pretty low point but then this coastal section like not coastal section this section along the Danube is absolutely stunning would definitely recommend a visit here when I did ride along the, the Danube back in 2019 I'm pretty sure I joined um, at Belgrade in Serbia so I don't think I've done this section um, so it's all new which is nice I went into the supermarket and I was bonking hard so I bought way too much so I've got stuff like packed everywhere all the way around in the rucksack um, eating half of it as well so I'm stuffed and just got food coming out of every every pocket oh cycle for a bit more and see where I get to I'd love a shower tonight I'm sticky sweaty um yeah slept out last night so be nice to have a shower tonight we'll see in no man's land between Serbia and Romania just going on a, a bridge across the Danube This section of the E70 has been allowed by the race organizers, but uh, pretty much every other section is totally banned, and I can see why it's absolutely awful. I'm now off the E70 
road. That was mildly terrifying. As soon as I got into Romania and the first uh, big city, uh, I know it's a real horribly foul smell. And um, yeah, it was really, really pungent. And I've smelt it for the whole time I've been down low. And I'm climbing up now towards, towards the checkpoint and the parkours, the last. The fourth checkpoint, the last one before Burgas and Bulgaria. And whether I'm just getting used to the smell or it's actually clearing, it's becoming nicer as, as I climb altitude. Um, I suppose either works. Currently climbing up the Transalpina climb in Romania. We're heading up towards checkpoint four and then the parkours is a gravel descent off the top, which is meant to be quite technical and possibly involve some hiker bike. So we'll see how that goes. I believe that's the, the first summit. I think there are two before we descend down to the checkpoint uh, where we've got to climb back up from there to start the, the parkour. Almost at the top of the climb now, and uh, it's absolutely spectacular. I can't believe how cool this climb is, and I would never have done it if it wasn't for the TCR. So thank you. Um, yeah, it's opened my eyes to a, a new climb. Definitely one you should put on your bucket list.
the checkpoint for CP4 is at the opposite side of the pass, um, all the way down at the bottom. And then the parkours for this section are at the top. So we had to go down to the checkpoint to get our stamp. And now, cruelly, we've got to climb all the way back to the top um, to descend on the parkours. And then once we've done the parkours, it's our uh, free reign again and we can choose our own route to Burgas. Um, but the, the parkours are, on this one are gravel, so all off-road. Um, and it's meant to be quite spicy. So we'll see what happens. Uh, it's gonna be interesting and hopefully um, we can get it do done before it gets dark. I gave it a bash, got about three quarters of the way up, and then it got very, very steep. And the lactate started to uh, build up. Woo! Bit of a hiker bike now. Wait on the other side. Красиво. You've already go for these dogs from that. I don't know. They're right behind us. I don't know. They're right behind us. made it back onto the road and this tarmac feels butterly smooth after the bone shatteringly um, horrible last um, 45 minutes well 
just the most difficult part of that, that um, section. The rest was really nice and finished it off in the dark, which probably made it more technical than it actually was. But yeah, very happy to be back on tarmac. Now it's roughly downhill to um, Burgas. I arrived in Brazoi um, after the, the parkours about 1 a.m. last night. Um, got into a hotel um, with the plan to sleep for three hours, get out at four, and head out just after. But for some reason, I, uh, I've been turned off my alarm. So I didn't wake up till about seven and go away just after that. I suppose I probably needed a sleep, but it's a little bit frustrating. Hopefully I'll feel stronger for these last two days. Romania over to Bulgaria. Uh, I was pushing quite hard because if I didn't get this this ferry tonight, which is the last one, then I'd be stuck here and I'd have to wait around for until um, 8.30, the first one in the morning, which would kill so much time, which would not be ideal. Um, so yeah, hopefully I can push on through Bulgaria um, tonight and get close to, to Burgas and finish tomorrow morning. Um, but yeah, I, I took a bit of a, a weird route because I've changed my ferry that I was going to get because I don't think I'd have made the, um, the one I originally planned. Um, so I went to a, one that was a bit closer and just managed to get here. But I had to reroute and um, make sure I was going the right way because it, it wasn't on the, on the Wahoo. I, uh, so I was just doing it on my phone and you're not allowed on e-roads um, in the TCR and the road I was going on went briefly onto an e-road and I was um, unsure whether that would be deemed allowable so I uh, routed around it which ended up on a, on a gravel track which um, made me a little nervous um, with catching this ferry, but it's all worked out.
I'm currently on the, the last push to, to Burgas now. Um, I rode through the whole of last night, apart from uh, getting really tired about 5 a.m. Um, so I had a, a 20 minute power nap in a bus stop. Um, just did the trick and the sun's fully up now and very hot. Um, but I feel disgusting. I've got loads of salt on me from yesterday still. Um, saddle sores and just feel really uncomfortable. Um, and yeah, dripping with sweat again today. But hopefully not much longer. And then I don't have to put these shorts back on. Um, I'll have to go shopping, buy myself some underwear, buy myself some shorts and some shoes. Um, but yeah, I'm looking forward to be done. Mix of emotions. I'm now on the parkours, the last parkours um, of the race. And it's yet more gravel. Just a killer when you didn't know it was gonna be here. But yeah, this this parkour takes me all the way into Burgas. And and that's the end. I'm looking forward to getting off the bike and not getting back on. Just sitting down and relaxing. I'm craving massive watermelon and swim in the sea. Oh, I'm gonna drink so much and eat so much. It's gonna be a nice three day rest in, in Murgas. Just had my first glimpse of the Black Sea. Just gotta descend down to it now. I can't, but I'll leave it at that. Not go for it. <laughs> I'm on the main road. 